It's fine. <laughs> All right, hello, Python fans. Uh, if you're not a Python fan, I uh, will. <laughs> then welcome. You will not be bored for the first few minutes. Uh, so I, I will be talking about Python packaging in Fedora. Uh, maybe you have seen this logo, Fedora loves Python. So I'll try to tell you what that means exactly. Uh, first thing I'll be talking about is Python 3. Uh, so Python is a pretty old language, older than Java. Uh, and uh, some years ago, it turns out that uh, uh, the old baggage in the language was was uh, accumulating so much that uh, they needed to do a, a new version with uh, with some backwards incompatibilities. Um, that was Python 3.0, which was released eight years ago already. It's been with us longer than, for example, Node.js, so it's a pretty long time. That world was different then. Uh, of course, the evolution has, has gone on. Python uh, 3.5 was released last year, uh, and a lot of the work between Python 3.0 and Python 3.5 was uh, adding uh, features to make it more compatible with the Python 2 UI. So if you tried porting something to Python 3.0 or 3.1 and realized that it's a very tough job, then uh, you might want to try again because it's gotten easier. Uh, and another important date, uh, 2020 is coming up when Python 2 will be officially uh, unsupported upstream. Uh, we'll see how that works out. Of course, uh, unsupported upstream means that somebody can still you know, pick it up and uh, and support it further, but it won't be me, at least in Fedora. So <laughs> by 2020, we should, we should have everything ported to Python 3 and, and uh, running on the new version. And uh, if you look at the dates, it's, uh, it's 12 years, which for supporting a, a piece of software is, is a pretty long time. So uh, to track the effort in Fedora, since we need to get done by 2020, uh, we've created a, a website called the Porting DB. If you have internet, you can look at it. It's at fedoraportingdb.xyz. Unfortunately, I don't have internet. I was counting on that, so I can show you. But it's this uh, colorful little dashboard that uh, that shows you. Why don't you have internet? Why don't you use a plug wireless? Because I came in about 20 minutes earlier and okay, virus, didn't check like everything out. Uh, wait, our, let's see. Maybe I can give you a local version. Right, so. So you saw the URL before. Uh, this is uh, my local version. Uh, I'll show you what all the graphs mean. Basically, green means good. Uh, the other colors mean we're not there yet. So, as you can see, we're about about halfway done. I'll talk more about it here. Here's a here's a graph from from the dashboard uh, showing how how the how the effort evolved over time. So this is. I will be talking about no, that. Okay, sorry. So, uh, as you can see, the the green part get, uh, keeps getting bigger, and that's the proportion of packages that are ported to Python three, which means either they're Python three only in Fedora, or they have both Python two and Python three versions. Below that, there's this uh, little gray part that's packages that won't be ported but already have some kind of alternative in Fedora. So for example, Python 2 would be in the gray part because that won't be ported in Python 3, but it has a better alternative already. Uh, then we have this yellow, which is supposedly things people are working on, but uh, 
people marking something as working as being worked on doesn't really well and work well in open source so I don't rely on that too much this blue part is probably the most important for now it's uh, packages that are already ported upstream so the the project has a Python 3 compatible version but it's not packaged in Fedora yet we'll be talking more about that later uh, <coughs> The gray and red parts are things that are not ported upstream yet. Uh, the red ones are things that are blocked by some dependency that's not ported yet. And the gray ones, you know, work can start on those right now if people want. So uh, there's still quite a lot of things Python to only upstream. Uh, but we're, we're almost halfway there upstream. So have the things in Fedora, which means they're, they have some standard of quality and some people care about them. Uh, so half of those are ported upstream. Uh, however, we're missing about 130 packages uh, to, to port them in Fedora. So this is a job for Fedora packagers. Nobody else can do that. and. Uh, <coughs> We'd like if, uh, if everybody chipped in and, and tried to help us port. If you go to the porting DB again, you'll get a, a guide to how to do that. If you port a Python package to Python 3 in Fedora, you'll get a badge. If you port more of them, you'll get more badges. So uh, it's... <coughs> <clears throat> it's quite fun actually. Uh, maybe not the first time, but uh, you know, learning all the all the new guidelines. <coughs> but uh, if you do one or three packages, it's, it becomes quite easy. Um, and of course, if you maintain something in Fedora, it's, it's better to learn the new guidelines and, and put it quite on free. Right, uh, now I'll go back to the things that are not ported even upstream, which uh, is a bit of a problem because they tend to be sometimes things that, uh, that might not make it into 2020. Uh, one category of that is Fedora infrastructure. There has been a lot of work on that actually <coughs> recently, but uh, still it's work that only Fedora people can do, nobody else will probably work on Koji or, or Body. So if, if you want to help, that's that's an area to, to work on. Uh, another big area is desktop toolkits. GTK2 will never support Python 3. Uh, they moved to, uh, to a new mechanism called G-Object Introspection in GTK3. So every package needs to be ported to GTK3 and then it'll presumably get Python 3 support uh, automatically in some way. <coughs> but uh, porting to, from GTK2 to 3 is, uh, is difficult at times, and it's something that Python people can't really help with. So I'm a bit worried that this, this magical timeline we have will not be met by the, by the GTK people. Also, WX widgets, the Python bindings there are a bit uh, <coughs> a bit slow currently, although I think uh, work has been uh, done there as well. There's the Sugar Desktop, where there are just talks about porting to Python 3 and, and GDK 3, but they really lack manpower, so if you like uh, desktops for kids, that's that's a good way to, to contribute. And then, of course, there are big apps where the programmers aren't really Python people because <coughs> if you have a package like Django or, uh, or NumPy or something like that, the programmers know Python and they know that Python 3 is a better language so they have more incentives to port but if you develop something like GIMP which only has Python bindings and lets other people use Python uh, you might not be, you might not have that much incentive to go and, and do the work. The same goes for Samba, which <coughs> I'm currently working on. Also, the developers don't really care that much. 
we'll see how that develops once once the deadline draws uh, draws closer. But those are the big problems upstream. All right. Uh, by the way, if you have any questions, I'm I'm happy to talk, uh, I'm happy to take them during the talk. Uh, just one question about the object oriented GTP3 also, also has some sort of a lack of documentation too. It's also become a problem for me that I want to use GTP3 because, you know, that also porting is okay, but also the documentation needs some help too, I guess. Yeah, lack of documentation in GTK3. Personally, whenever I wanted to find some kind of example, specifically a, a Python example for GTK, either two or three. Was pretty hidden, but <coughs> I don't know. I haven't. I haven't really really done that. Yet. So, yeah, documentation might, might be a problem. Okay. So let's move from Python three to uh, another thing <coughs> that we're doing in Fedora. Uh, if you're a packager, you should know what a packager should do. You should make sure that the software doesn't. Uh, show too many ads and doesn't track people, stuff like that. You should make sure it integrates with the rest of the system, doesn't conflict with any other packages. You should check that the licenses all check out. And this is why we package stuff. This is why we make a distribution. This is why we curate the set of packages that are available to people. Unfortunately, if you want to be a packager, you also need to uh, read <laughs> a lot of documentation <laughs> most of which doesn't really apply to you. And you also need to know how to write spec files, which honestly is literally ancient black magic. <laughs> and that is a problem. That is why we don't have enough packagers, because people don't just go and, yeah, I'll make a package in Fedora, and then they get to points four and five, and they say, yeah, maybe I'll leave that to somebody else. I mean, uh, if you if you just want to start, the the spec file isn't that hard. I mean, you just copy it from somewhere, uh, yeah, exactly. put in put in the values that are <coughs> that are relevant to your package. The yeah you yes you can you can if if you if you read the documentation carefully, you may find that there's a tool that gives you a template. Good point. Yes, you need to read the guidelines, and that's what beginners don't do, unfortunately. <laughs> but yeah, there's, there's a template, but most people still copy. Uh, yeah, un um, unfortunately, what happens when you, when you copy stuff, you also copy over things that somebody added for yes. <coughs> old versions of non-Fedora systems and yeah. things that were, that were useful five years ago, and Nobody understands that anymore. I, mean, I do because it's my job, but <laughs> not a lot of people understand this. And I mean, can you just delete this? Probably. What will break? Come on, RC, ask me. Yeah. If you, that's not the most efficient way. Uh, or you can just try deleting it and see if it works, right? Yeah, delete everything. <coughs> Yeah, I mean, if you're an experienced packager, you can you know where to go and ask for help. But again, if if you're just starting out, it's 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 pretty hard. <clears throat> now I'll compare that to Python uh, Python's native setup, which is setup.py. It again starts out pretty pretty easy. It's just Python syntax, and if if you want to make something more complicated. Then you just write some Python, which you presumably already know because you're making a Python application. Uh, so, surprise, surprise, developers are doing this instead of making packages for Fedora. Uh, now, another problem with uh, with RPM and with the spec files is that they were they were made for an era where when software was distributed by putting a tarball somewhere on the internet. And then the packager had to figure out what has to be done to install it and, and build it and, and in, integrate it and all that stuff. Now we're, at least for Python, at least 
trying to have some kind of structured metadata and a standard way to install the software on all kinds of system and make it integrate as, as well as it can be done from within the language. Of course, it's not perfect, but there, there are efforts to do that. So we have structured metadata for every package, for almost every Python package. And we have a standard place to put those packages, which is PyPI. Yeah. So at least some of the things that packages do could be automated. And that's where pip2rpm comes in, which is a package that you install, you run it on a package on PyPI, and it gives you a spec file. Yes. And it's magic, and it's perfect. Uh, yeah, it, uh, it's still in development, so it, uh, it <laughs> might not give you a fully functioning package. It uh, will most likely not give you a package that will make it through review, at least if you get a good reviewer. but. For starting out, uh, this is this is probably the way to go. This is probably better than a template. I think, sh I think we should also focus to finish this one, then go to the other. But if, just, if it's in form, become full functional, then nobody has to be become a problem. And it's just a fast the process to make a lot of package in a short of time. Like that. You know, what is the, I mean, it's going to be actually much more reliable to focus on the, the other packages. But if it's finishing, it's also I think, important, right? Oh, I don't think I got a question. No, no, I, I was it a question? Say, it's, just, it's like a suggestion. I'm just trying to say if it's going to be better if you finish this package, become full functional, about to give the spec file we actually need it with the whole thing. Well, well, uh, the problem is it's, it's never going to be fully functional. It's, <laughs> it's probably never. Yes, it's oh. probably never going to be fully functional. Uh, also, another problem is that this metadata is not complete in all cases. Yes. The good thing there is that it's open source, so we can actually go in and say <coughs> pip to RPO, and it's this kind of metadata right, added to whatever Python uses. Like, instead of writing spec files, you can apply some parts or whatever for the spec file generated by this tool to make it actually work and put yes. it in a spec file, rather than focus on fixing spec file in the time. Yeah. This way you can automate. This is what we are trying to do in Copper. Yeah. You probably heard that. We, I, I just, we yeah. try to rebuild the whole PyPI <coughs> uh, and we used to put PIP to RPM. Uh, yeah, and, I'm, so, I'm so, and we yeah. were finding the common errors and uh, problems and we reported to PIP to RPM maintainer Michael C. Cyprian. So we were fixing that. Uh, so. We are trying to focus, at least my work uh, right now, to, to find the, the common patterns and not all those 70,000 uh, modules will be able to, to package, but if we fix some small issue, yes. it will get us hundreds of yes. um, working packages. So we are trying to work on that. It will be probably never 100% right. okay, but we will probably give you Hundred thousand uh, of packages, yeah. which somehow work, which may be for a lot of people enough. Eighty percent is really good. right. Yeah. At least from my point. So, so now, now when we have the metadata and the common place where the packages are, we can do exactly that. Uh, why exactly are we doing that? One reason is to test pip to RPM, giving. An, an algorithm, all possible inputs it needs to work on is it's a pretty good test suite, I think. Uh, I think in the future we should also use it to run upstream tests. Uh, when I was at, at PyCon, people were complaining that if you have, for example, Django and a Django plugin, uh, then testing if one still works when the other is upgraded isn't really something the tooling around GitHub can do. And I think that the distribution is conceptually a pretty good place for this kind of integration tests. So uh, combining this with Koshche or something like that to detect these changes, rerunning the tests should be a, a good service, not only to Fedora, but uh, for the whole community. And of course, uh, this all has to work first. So it's a bit of a future, future plan. Uh, and we can provide a repository, so if you want to get packages straight from PyPI but not use uh, not use wheels but use RPMs, you'll be able to do that. Although 
<coughs> you lose all the things that a human packager uh, a human packager does, of course. So might not be the best idea to do it. Uh, now, when you have a repository, uh, you can theoretically write a DNF plugin that will emulate what the Python package, Python installer does and install uh, Fedora packages from a requirements.txt file. Uh, to do this, you have to solve one more problem, which is uh, mapping the names they use on PyPI to Fedora, which differ in lots of weird ways. Uh, uh, they, they do. <coughs> Because the Py, the distribution name or the PyPI name is not always actually the name of the project itself, and Fedora prefers to have the name of the project, and there are historical incompatibilities between the names, so it's better to keep them them separate. However, we can add a virtual provides to every uh, every Python package that says I'm providing this Python distribution, so when you do that uh, DNF pip install, it can look at that and install this virtual provide. And the good news there is, that's already done in Fedora 25. So if you have a package in Fedora 25, and it uses standard Python installation, it should have that provides already in there. If it doesn't, then it's an RPM bug. Yes, thanks. So, uh, yeah, things are looking better. <coughs> now I'd like to talk a bit about uh, packaging Python itself, and rather than uh, libraries for Python. So we did this thing called System Python, which is something you'll probably already have on your computer. It, run, uh, it lives in libexec, and it, it came out of an effort to minimize the size of the minimal install. If you look at the Python standard library, a lot of it is, it is unneeded stuff. There are, of course, tests which you don't need at runtime. There's lib2 to 3, which is development only. There's uh, idlelib, which is graphical. You probably don't know, need that in the cloud. And now, some of this, like the graphical stuff and the tests, are already separated so you don't get those in a minimal install. But things like installation tools and development tools uh, are still in there. So what we did is uh, split them out. And when you install <coughs> System Python, you get uh, just a subset of the Python standard library. So you use this, uh, this binary in your shebang. You do uh, some kind of macro magic in the, in the spec file to uh, remove the normal Python dependencies and uh, then you'll not drag in all of the all of the standard library with, uh, with your package. This is uh, probably useful only to stuff like DNF and cloud in it at the moment and we're trying to talk to them to to switch to system Python so we can actually get the size reduction. <coughs> in the future this might be used uh, to isolate system tools from uh, changes that the user does to the system. For example, if you do, uh, if you upgrade some kind of system library using pip, which you shouldn't do, but people still do it, uh, this might be useful to isolate uh, stuff like DNF so that it doesn't break. But again, that's that's future and. It's probably what the name System Python implies more than uh, more than a reduced standard library, but uh, so far we have we have this in Fedora. Uh, yeah, so some technical details. There's an illustration of how it works. When you install System Python, you only get important stuff. When you install something that needs the whole Python, you get all of that plus uh, the uh, development and installation tools and documentation you know. all right does that make sense yes. so are we going to have libraries 
built for the system Python. Excuse me? Do, are we going to have libraries built for the system Python? Um, like we have libraries built for Python 2, Python 3, and then. Uh, no, no, no. It's, it's a proper subset of Python okay. 2. It's Not just a subset. So if, if your program doesn't need these uh, these development and, and uh, whatever is not there, then you can just switch to system Python. Okay, so it can't need anything else. It can't need anything else, then you need to depend on, on the full Python. But the problem is the test, uh, splitting the standard library is something that Python core developers don't really anticipate. Fedora already does it. It, like, it splits out the test module because it's giant. It splits out the graphical stuff because that would bring out then X dependencies. Uh, so, but that's something that Fedora and Debian and all the distros do. This is something that uh, is not that well supported actually. So the testing for it is, uh, is much harder. So I wouldn't recommend uh, actually switching to system Python for a random package. Yes? Did you say supported upstream or discouraged upstream? My understanding was they weren't very happy about the idea of doing that. Uh, yes, there was, there was a pretty long discussion about, about doing that. Uh, you mean I didn't read the upstream discussion? <laughs> I did. It was long and rambling. Okay. Uh, one argument in our favor is that uh, Python already, uh, already if you, if you build Python without some dependencies, then the corresponding modules will just be missing, and they'll, yeah. So Python already does something like this. So, <coughs> yeah, and about it being supported, well, Python is community supported. So if Debian does it and Fedora does it and Arch does it. Then it's pretty much supported because there are Python like core developers in all these communities. Do those distros do it the same way? Uh, the test and and graphics, I think they well, there's not many ways to do that. I don't mean to derail. I'm just curious. Uh, Debian has something called I think minimal Python yeah. that does something similar to this. We specifically chose not to do it the same as as they do because. Uh, there are some problems with that approach. OpenWR to people also has some minimal Python and full Python. And just Excuse me? OpenWR to packages also has some sort of a minimal, normal, and full Python package. Like a, does it make it a three section thing? Yeah, so, so my plan for, for kind of long term future is to actually uh, make a supported way to do this upstream so you can choose what pieces of the standard library you want and have some good error reporting for the case where you should install something extra. Because the current way is, is pretty bad, but we're, we're doing what we want. Uh, <coughs> if we keep it to these two packages and, and test them and help them, help them with, uh, with migrating, uh, it, should, it should serve as a, as a good uh, uh, experiment about about how this can done has, can be done as well. So at least that hopefully it'll it'll give us some actual uh, actual benefits as well. But the, the size reduction is pretty big for for the cloud image. <coughs> right. Uh, another part of my talk is about Python three six, which is the upcoming version of Python. Uh, from the features point of view, it's it's not it's not done yet, but <coughs> for the hobbyist programmer, I guess there are, there are not that many changes. There are format strings, so there another way to format strings in Python. I think it's the third now. Uh, you can you can just write a string and uh, use variables in it, and you don't have to repeat the variable name so many times. So it's it's pretty useful once you get uh, used to it, so hopefully it'll entice more people to switch. Excuse me? Twenty-five years for <laughs> twenty-five years and three iterations of That's string right. interpolation. Yeah. To get to normal string interpolation that yeah we're used to. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean it. It still looks pretty magic and unpythonic to most people, but it's pretty useful. <coughs> I guess it's, it's like Amazon. 
I, I totally disagree with the concept of Pythonic or Xenopython. So <laughs> it's a tool. So. Yeah. <laughs> It's a tool and practicality uh, beats purity, so there we go. Uh, another thing is the, uh, you might be familiar with bytecode, Python compiles source code to bytecode, then interprets that. Bytecode is gone, it's replaced by word code, which is like bytecode but better, uh, it brings a pretty big speed up. Uh, there are also uh, planned speed ups for dictionary access and, and uh, Optimizations, but uh, it's not clear if they'll actually actually make it to Python reset. But expect uh, expect some pretty big speed ups, uh, like tens of percent. <coughs> and if you're making a library like uh, Django ORM or uh, or SQL Alchemy or some kind of magic class uh, class creation thing, there are some pretty useful tools there. I'll not go into details, but uh, read the release notes. Uh, I've people that are really deep into Python were, were pretty happy with this. So I recommend you reading that. So how does Python 3.6 align with Fedora? The alpha freeze was uh, a few months before Fedora's alpha freeze. Pretty good. The problem is Python's alpha phase is a lot longer than Fedora's. So <coughs> the beta freezes were uh, were a lot closer together and the first release candidate will unfortunately come two months after Fedora's final, Fedora 25's final freeze so we're not getting Python 3.6 in Fedora 25. There will be a copper repository if you want that. If you want to live on the bleeding edge then you do what you do when you want to live on the bleeding edge and use Rawhide. We'll try to get 3.6 into Rawhide as soon as possible. As soon as, uh, I mean, we might go with, with even the RC1, with the release candidate, to get as much testing because it's, uh, under the hood, it's, it's a breaking change, this uh, bytecode versus word code. So it, it should get as much testing as, as possible. So it will require a rebuild of every package, I assume. Yes. Uh, well, one, one thing to note, uh, already in Fedora 25, we had a rebuild of every Python package, even though there was no mass rebuild for the whole Fedora to but get the, uh, the virtual requirements. But Fedora 25 was uh, branched a few days ago. Yes. So you can build the Python 3.6 into the Rawhide right now. Yeah. Uh, I would rather put uh, the release candidate there because before the release candidate, it's not feature complete and it's it's broken a lot. Okay. What's the date of um, 3.6 final? Because I think it's written the same date as the for Oh, right. So You're correct. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I read somewhere that they would like to release it by the end of the year because yes, yes, yes. The, the RC right. date is wrong. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. <coughs> so the final oh. is probably yeah. correct, but the RC one yeah, the, the, the RC date is wrong. I'm sorry. Okay. I miscopied. No. I will fix that on the slides I put online. Or you can search Google for the correct date. So yeah, uh, that's that's where we stand. No Python 3.5 for Fedora 25 and 3.6 and 26 as soon as possible. <coughs> now I have been talking a lot about uh, about we do and stuff. Uh, so I'd like to explain a bit about who is we. Unfortunately, I have a bit of bad news because we is uh, in most cases, the Python maintenance team at Red Hat. Now, uh, here I'd li like to give a bit of internal history. There was this uh, Python maintenance team, and I joined it. I was supposed to work upstream, like on Samba and CPython, and not touch Fedora too much. So I was happily doing that. Then the person went to another team. A new person was hired. 
then more people left, then more people were hired, and suddenly I was the most experienced full-timer in the team. <laughs> and uh, this happened in a pretty short amount of time, so we had problems with knowledge transfer and fighting fires and stuff like that. And <coughs> we uh, skipped on some things, and one of those things, which was probably our biggest mistake, was communica communicating our plans with the community. So uh, we did a bunch of changes like a, an individual contributor would, uh, getting permission from FESCO and uh, doing, doing all the processes, but not really communicated with the, with the Python guys in Fedora. Which, uh, I mean, this, this history shouldn't be a, uh, an excuse. It's supposed to be more like an explanation. Uh, we made a mistake, and I apologize for that. Uh, hopefully, uh, or well, it'll be my goal to, to make this better so that the next time I give a presentation like this I'll be able to say with, uh, with a little more honesty that we're the we're Fedora's Python Special Interest Group. If you'd like what we do, uh, you, want, you should join the conversations on Python Develop or in the Fedora Python IRC. You should check out what's on GitHub on Fedora Python. And if you like it a lot, then please join us and help uh, make Python and Fedora better. And uh, just mention Python actually has a wiki page, which is currently kind of updated, but we are also in the process for updating everything with the most relevant information. So yeah, you're going to see hopefully next week, maybe, or the week after. Yeah, after Flockens. Yeah, other plugins, all the uh, relevant and more recent stuff, and some historical facts as well regarding Python, Fedora, etc. Right, uh, yeah, um, that went faster than I rehearsed, so. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> Questions, comments, yeah. anything? Uh, yes? Uh, uh, could you go back to the slide where I'm already you don't need the slide? Uh, where you talked about running upstream tests for Python packages. So, what's your take on whether to include tests in the maybe the wheel or the source distribution, or just in the source repo or, or let's say Git? Uh, so, this this is a long-term plan, right? So, so first, copper needs to work for most packages and pip to rpm needs to needs to work reliably <coughs> and running the tests will probably require some changes to the metadata so uh, we need to figure out a way for for upstreams to say these are our tests this is how they're packaged this is how you how you get them this is how you run them and if we can get that in, in the setup pi, then we can we can use it in Fedora. And of course, everybody else can use it. Are you speaking of tests as in, you know? The, the check, check section. section. OK. Yeah. The problem here is that currently, if you have a random project, pip to rpm is rounded, it tries setup pi test. Right. Because that's the only thing that it can try. And most of the upstream projects, like in Python packages, they just don't enable this. They just use no test or by test or whatever. Right. It, yeah. Well, and that's that's one stuff. problem. Another problem is that they don't package the tests. Yeah. They don't release the yeah, tests. Yeah, yeah they yeah. usually only have them on GitHub. Yeah. And they don't do include them in the source. No, you have to go. That's the human package that they begin. Yeah. In my in my experience, there was no standard way to run any tests. I don't know why. There is a standard well, set up by test. They don't follow it. And no, yeah, well. <laughs> it's, I, come, I mean, I did a lot of work for Perl module packaging before, which seems to have solved this problem about 20 years ago. And everything is standardized, and it's all been automatically through GNC pan and whatever. Yeah. Um, and I mean, Perl has the, has the good fortune of being around when distributions were still cared about by developers. And, Nowadays, people just put stuff on PyPI and people install with it, with, with PIP. So there's right. not as much 
initiative for, for this to happen. But we we need to do this to like, lower the work uh, work that needs to be done. Yeah. Okay. Because it's also a problem of dependencies. If PaaS bring all the dependencies, then I don't know. So yeah, I think there is also a standardized way to do this. Instead of I can specify test requirements. Yeah, that, that's something Setupy does, but uh, RPM doesn't. Uh, I have a question about those dependencies, because when I go to my conference, the guys are saying, well, don't use system, I just use deep, because this is the way to go. Those dependencies are corrected, and I'm fine. Uh, RPMs, the system has sometimes different set of yes. uh, dependencies and versions. How to make sure that those two match? Because here there's a new name, right? A new dependency, new variance, where if I'm getting some upstream project, the requirements text and test requirements is around all the systems, and those dependencies are taken from P rather than from the system. So how to so, make this so the problem system is, audited for my so user? The problem is here that setupi, in setupi you can have dependencies. But if you install the RPM, you also have, I mean, the way to do that now is the NF install the package name and not give it the dependencies. Now you have to be sure that the dependencies actually match. And, and that's why we have a version version in this virtual provide. So here if you install some Python package with dependency specified, it will either install it or tell you such a version is not found. In which case you have to use pip to get the right. version that's but not this in the This is the DNF side. Is there any work on the pip side to work vice versa so it makes sure that whatever is found in DNF with DNF won't be filed through the pip? That is... No. Because then we have... That, that, that is already there. The problem... So the problem is that if you're working on the system itself, if you do sudo pip and install something that needs a new version, yeah. you'll upgrade the system package and break all the system yes. changes. If So you shouldn't use sudo pip ever. Just just don't, it breaks stuff, it's, it doesn't work in Fedora. Uh, or you can use a virtual environment, which is completely isolated and it doesn't use the system install package. It doesn't work. So, you no, can you can set it up too, but nobody yeah. does that. It's not Maybe the default. The so, solution. yeah, uh, that that is the solution. So make your virtual and use system packages, and then Maybe pip. Possible. Yeah. It it is possible, and then pip will use them if they have correct versions or install new versions into just the virtual right. environment. Yeah. And the plan is to. And this this is the the problem also right. I got it. I'm using it, and then whatever is not found, I need to use the cop to build it. But then the name spaces is different because I cannot use the same name spaces on the requirements. I need to transfer it. And then it's not for copy because uh, it's different name spaces. Right? Mixing PIP and RPM is, uh, yes. is mm -hmm. it's difficult, and that's why we're doing this to, to, make, to bring it closer together. I mean, if, if you have if you have a specific problem, then maybe talk to us after the after the talk. So I have a question about uh, Python three and Apple. Uh, there's been Python three of three four packages that have been brought to Apple, which are available, available, but there are very few libraries built for these packages. I've I've been building a lot of them for my because I'm I'm working on mainland. It's a Python three only package. So I've been working. On, I've been building, well, changing a lot of specs files to, to build for Python 3.4. It's not very hard to change, but I wonder what should I do with those packages? Because I have them in my private repo. Should I like put them somewhere on top, or should I just like change uh, change the spec files in these gits and ask the maintainers to change? It's very simple to change. Yeah. It's just a macro that replaces. Yeah, ask the um, maintainers. I mean, if, so if somebody maintains a package in Apple, they. You know, okay, yeah, the, but the, the problem is you're running the packages that aren't maintained in Apple, and yeah. so you want to maintain them, right? I think, it, yeah. Because if they're not already there, then you should request a branch and then maintain it. Okay, want. yeah, sure. Uh, well, that's the best one. So it's okay to have uh, these new uh, Python 3 or 4 macros in Apple? And oh, in yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, no, we make sure that everything 
it works all the way down as far as we can make it, even into oh, yeah. Apple VI, um, some of the stuff. I mean, obviously, Python 3 is there, so. But that's just a, that's just a trick, right? Uh, if, if, the Python, if the Python 2 package is supplied by RHEL or CentOS, you have to exclude the Python 2 package from building. In right, and that's so such a pain. It's, it's not that complicated. It's just like to exclude it on the on the right. file section. Right. So it's not it does get to be annoying. Yeah, yeah, you can do it though. Okay, so I'll, I'll yeah, that's what I would do is branch those packages. Remember, the owner has a week to right. deny you if they don't want it. Otherwise, it happens anyway. So you know, I'll make everybody. Well, that's okay. always yeah, it's supposed to be. Um, I'm not a developer, but I needed a Pelican to generate some static website. Mm -hmm. So, as a newbie, I typed Pelican, and then I told me, if you want to use Pelican, you have to install Python to uh, uh, Pelican. So, I said, it's too bad. I have Pelican in Python 3, how do I use it? And uh, I looked for a few minutes, and I didn't find how to when I when I'm typing Pelican, how to how to run it with the Python three Pelican because the the user bin the, the file right the so so was so the standard version. right so, so the standard way is to type Pelican three or Pelican dot dash three. Okay. Okay. Uh, one of those is in the package guidelines. I can never remember which ones, but some package predate this guideline, so you might. Uh, right want to run, inst install Python 3 Pelican first. I did, I did, but when and I then run the me, magic command RPM, RPM query list of files for Python 3 Pelican. And maybe you can grip. Yeah. So oh. in this case, it's not named according to the guidelines. Oh, and it never was. Well, who owns that pack? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, file of bugs. You shall file of bugs on Bugzilla immediately. Yeah, yeah. so it <laughs> <laughs> this is horrible. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it. Kill it with fire. Yeah, yeah. actually. Yeah, so, what what so with all this. What, normally, I should only have any kind of. Uh, it, it should, should be, be Python 3 dash. No, no, it should no, be no, Python. No, right. Three. No. Is there a dash? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it yeah. should be like this. No, but. Because, so this is a, a problem of uh, packaging, it's not, because I tried to type Pelican something, but it was unexistent. And uh, also another thing is, what does this tool do? What is it for? I don't know Pelican. It oh, generates it's, uh, it's website generator. Yeah, website generator. And do you care if you want to run the Python tool? Right, that's right. the important uh, part. You yes, do because it has Python configuration. Yeah, it, okay, then it actually cares, unfortunately. This, this one actually cares. And uh, the, the contents. To, to give to Pelican with uh, this markdown. And I produce some uh, Python script to produce this markdown so Pelican can, after, uh, write the uh, HTML file and the world website structure. So I learned a few, I have the basics in Python, so I learned mm -hmm. Python 3. So I was confused. Python 3 plus Python 2, didn't know what to do. Yeah, well, true. in 2020, we're dropping Python 2, and there will yes. be only Python 3, and no more confusion. And I think we're out of time, so uh, more questions after this. Uh, thank you for your attention. I hope you will. Get your stickers. And don't forget the stickers. Uh, yeah. So just yeah, you, you can I I've, I've got online through the hotel the network. Did you need yeah, to try it? Yeah. Uh, we need to empty case. You close that? I don't know if, if close anybody can empty.